Tips for Teaching Pronunciation In this module about culture, identity, and emotion, we include a few words about pronunciation instruction because pronunciation and accent is the area of L2 acquisition that is most closely tied to emotion and identity. When it comes to pronunciation instruction in an English as a foreign language or content-based instruction context, teachers should focus on making sure that their students' pronunciation is comprehensible. It is not necessary, nor even realistic, to aim for native-like pronunciation for most L2 speakers. We are forming bilingual or polylingual speakers and we do not need to try to make our students sound like monolingual native speakers of the target language. Given all the other things that CBI instructors need to teach their students, it is unlikely that you will find much extra time in your schedule to have a lesson specifically focused on pronunciation. At the same time, it would be a disservice to your students to not correct mispronunciations that would cause them to be incomprehensible to most English speakers. The best approach to pronunciation instruction in a CBI context is to do quick mini lessons on pronunciation as the need arises. Next, you will see three examples of pop-up lessons on pronunciation. Scenario 1. Veronica was teaching a 10th grade chemistry class, and the lesson of the day was on Boyle's Law. Veronica noticed that many students were pronouncing Boyle's Law in a way that would be very difficult for other English speakers to understand. To address this, she waited for a moment in the lesson when she felt that she could take a few minutes to talk about something else without interrupting anyone. Veronica modeled the pronunciation of Boyle's Law, making efforts to exaggerate how she moved her mouth to pronounce the different sounds. Then, she invited the whole class to repeat after her in chorus. After a couple of repetitions, she called on a few students to pronounce Boyle's Law individually. Scenario 2. In Nuruddin's social studies class, one of his students mentioned green tea. But at first, Nuruddin did not understand the student. The student seemed very frustrated that the teacher did not understand what she was saying, especially given that green and tea are two very common and basic words in English. After clarifying what the student was saying, Nuruddin realized that his student was not extending the vowel sounds long enough in the two words for them to be easily comprehensible. Nuruddin quickly explained that the vowel sounds in those words need to last longer, and he accompanied this explanation with a hand gesture to express longer. He used the same gesture as he pronounced in an exaggerated fashion, green tea. He reminded his students that sounds that may sound silly at first to an L2 learner are probably just right to the ear of a native speaker of that language. He had the whole class repeat together, and then he invited a few individual students, including the original student who said that, to model the pronunciation. A couple of the students originally pronounced the words too quickly. He repeated green tea to them, emphasizing the length of the vowel sounds and making the same hand gesture again. Everyone was able to pronounce it well by the second or third try. When they did pronounce it well, Nuruddin praised them with phrases like, that's right, and you've got it. Scenario 3. In Fiona's class, a student was reading out loud and came across the word phenomenon. 
the student got tongue-tied over the word. To help him, Fiona pronounced the word broken up by syllables, f, na, m, non, and she tapped her finger once for each of the four syllables. Fiona then invited the student to repeat the word in the same way, breaking the word up by syllables and tapping his finger once for each syllable, as if he were in a music lesson learning the right tempo for a song. This trick helped the student pronounce the word correctly. She had him repeat a few times more in the same way, and then she invited him to say the word more naturally. He was able to do so. When he did, she said, great job. Then she had the whole class repeat the word the first few times slowly while tapping and then at the end all together. She agreed that long words like that can be tough to pronounce, and she suggested that they try the tapping method the next time they run into difficulties with a long word like that. Here are the references used for this text.